Okay, welcome back after the break. I have started the recording again. और एक तो ये कि मैं इनाम का नाम यहाँ से माइनस कर रहा हूँ, माइनस फाइव को खत्म कर दिया। इब्तिदा को रहने देते हैं प्लस फाइव। Okay. So in continuation, uh, we were studying the method of uh, uh, measurement of transpiration, evapotranspiration. So first method uh, in the group of uh, direct method of measurement are mass transfer method. Why we call them mass transfer? Because water in the form of mass is measured in it. So we measure the transfer of mass. You will see uh, in the method of lysimeter. You will see in this field experimentation method. So this field experimentation method and the lysimeter method are uh, similar to each other. Uh, differences in lysimeter, we have a kind of uh, a tank, a well instrumented tank or uh, a chamber. While in field, we don't make a tank. We measure these things, mass or the flow of water uh, in the field. So they are they are more or less similar to each other. Inflow outflow method also similar, but at a larger scale, regional scale level. So let us go to the lysimeter method. It is uh, used to estimate ET evapotranspiration and the uh, components of the water balance. Uh, what is the lysimeter? It is uh, a container. It is a tank. It is a chamber. Anything you can call it. It is a container usually of half meter to two meter diameter and the purpose of that chamber, purpose of that container of that tank is to separate the root zone from the surrounding soil, root zone soil from the surrounding soil. Maybe you can understand this better from this figure. So lysimeter is a tank or chamber. So this part is a lysimeter. If you look it actually in start in the field, it will seems to be like this uh, a, a round circle. You can see only uh, and it has the vertical walls which are uh, which have no uh, uh, permission in, which restrict the water within that chamber within that wall. So it has a tank uh, which ha which separates the root zone of the of the plant plant ke root zone soil is separated from the surrounding soil so that if I apply some water to this lysimeter, it should not escape from the side of this uh, area. So it should remain within this tank. So any water which is in the root zone that will be utilized by the plot, but any water which seep down further below layer, further into the lower levels, so that we call as a deep percolation that will be collected in this lysimeter bottom and then it will be drained to a measuring cylinder on the side of a lysimeter. So this lysimeter will have uh, a drainage pipe installed underneath and on a surrounding area or nearby area, there will be another tank, another hole in which a measuring cylinder or measuring tank will be there. So any deep percolation from the lysimeter is also accounted, is also measured. So you see, we are actually measuring the water quantity. So that's why this method can also be called as mass balance uh, method. Uh, so and it can also be called as direct method because we are directly measuring uh, the evapotranspiration in the field. How we measure it, I will tell you later on, but at the moment, just see the construction of the lysimeter. Lysimeter is a tank which separates the root zone soil from the surrounding soil. How much is the, how big is this tank? Uh, no standard value. Uh, it can be of any size. Point, uh, usually we construct it uh, 0.2 to uh, 0.5 to 2 meter diameter, uh, and it can be enlarged also. So why we construct it? It should be constructed in the similar environment in which you want to study that crop. Because we have seen that evapotranspiration requirement are affected by the climatic condition, are affected by the soil condition, are affected by the irrigation method. So all the conditions of uh, the actual crop are 
applied to this lysis meter also. Only thing is that we make the arrangement so that the water can be uh, measured accurately. Water which we give to the lysis meter, water which drain out of the water, uh, lysis meter, water which overflow the lysis meter, water which come to the lysis meter from the precipitation that we actually measure. So uh, water which we apply on the lysis meter like irrigation water that we measure. So when we measure all these inflows and outflows, then using this inflow outflow, we can uh, apply the mass balance equation that inflow should be equal to the outflow. Water cannot be destroyed, water cannot be, uh, it can change the phases. Uh, so overall mass cannot be destroyed. So mass balance equation can be applied and uh, then we can find the unknown parameter, then we can find unknown parameter. So construction of the lysis meter you have seen usually uh, along with the lysis meter we have other climatic factors uh, measurement instrument at least rain gauge is necessary so that we should know how much is rain coming to this lysis meter so a rain gauge must be over there and a measuring sl a cylinder should be there our measurement should be there so that we can measure the deep percolation so when construction is understood to uh, us then uh, if we uh, uh, give some symbols to the measured water, the water which we input to the lysis meter through precipitation. If we call that as P, the water which we apply artificially as irrigation, if we call that as IRN, uh, net irrigation, the water uh, which is uh, which was present uh, in the uh, soil of the lysis meter. Uh, in the previous time step and now the difference of that the water content storage change change in soil water storage so because initially there will be some moisture content in the soil and uh, today if it has a moisture content of 10 percent tomorrow it has a moisture content of uh, let us say 8 percent it means 2 percent moisture of the soil has been utilized by the plant so that change of the moisture is also measured. So change of the soil water content or soil moisture. So that is if we give it symbol delta SW. If any water which is going out of the lysis meter through the surface runoff, if I apply irrigation or if rain is quite heavy, some water will overflow the lysis meter. So if that is called as capital R and if any water which is percolating deep, which goes into the deeper layer, out of the root zone. Root zone is usually top one meter, one and a half meter. So lysis meter should be larger than that. So lysis meter should be larger than the root zone so that it can grow the crop easily. Uh, depth of the lysis meter should be larger than the root zone. So any water which is going out of the root zone, if I measure it and call it as a PW, then applying the mass balance equation, which is this one, that uh, inflow, so these are the two kinds of inflows M minus outflows minus this e ET also. This should also be brought over here and uh, taking into account the water contributed by the soil or water contributed to the soil. Sometimes moisture content reduce in the soil, sometimes moisture content increase. So if moisture content is reduced in the soil, it means oh, that is being used by the crop. If moisture content has increased in the soil, it means it is storing that moisture. So that moisture content, so some of these inflows and outflows should be zero. So this ET should also be over here minus with the minus sign. So that should be equal to zero. That is nothing but law of conservation of the mass that total inflow minus total outflows should be uh, equal or their difference should be zero. So out of all these parameters, Precipitation is measured through rain gauge. Irrigation, we have, we apply on it, so we measure it, quantity of water. Change of soil moisture can be measured by measuring the soil moisture content from one time step to the next time step, and then convert it into the depth of water. We have formula available, which can convert moisture content in percentage into uh, amount of water present over there. This runoff and this deep percolation are also measured. Only thing which we cannot measure is this ET. 
so we calculate et from this equation all the remaining right hand things are measured on the lysimeter itself so this is elaborated detailed field measure field based experiment uh, we carry out on daily basis to calculate evapotranspiration on daily basis or on seasonal basis to calculate the seasonal evapotranspiration so whatever the crop we grow in this lysimeter whatever the crop we grow in this lysimeter so we will be getting the evapotranspiration requirement for that crop if it is wheat we will be getting etc for wheat if it is grass standard grass we will be getting et not for that grass so in this way oh, experiment have been carried by different researchers and etc have been calculated for various crops once you have the actual evapotranspiration for the crop and uh, et not is also known to us then people uh, uh, take the ratio of these two and give crop crop coefficient k values so people like me like you civil engineers or other people they use this crop coefficient uh, as a as a input and then they calculate et not for today climatic condition and then they multiply these two thing together to calculate the uh, today's crop water uh, evapotranspiration requirement etc for example in my, in this lawn we have the grass grassy lawn so if i want to measure its etc for today so today temperature i will use or today pan evaporation data i will use to calculate et not uh, standard crop evapotranspiration for today for this grass i will see from some lysimeter study what is the k value so i will multiply that k with the et not and i will not go for the lysimeter study so those who are planning irrigation schemes are planning the country they themselves don't go to the lysimeter study this is carried out by the research institutes and they give us the k value and then we utilize it there are two variation variants of uh, lysimeter there are two types of lysimeter one is called as the weighing type lysimeter in which the moisture in the soil is measured through the weight of that lysimeter so if this tank is placed on a weighing balance underneath so then change of the weight will tell me the change of the moisture in the soil so there can be some lysimeter which are weighing type of the lysimeter they are more accurate and there are some lysimeter which measure the volume 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 of the water in it so those are a non weighing type of lysimeter both are practiced they can be used for daily hourly basis so that is uh, the uh, detail of lysimeter uh, in lahore uh, there is an institute they call it pakistan council of research in water resources they have carried out some studies on lysimeter uh, for various crops uh, pcrwr if you write in the google and then you search lysimeter studies so they have carried out in faisalabad in lahore in islamabad different part of pakistan these lysimeter study to uh, mention the uh, cropping coefficient for these crops so any question in this topic how to measure the evapotranspiration requirement of a crop using lysimeter this word is new but it is very common in case of agriculture people they know what is lysimeter so for you you should not be afraid of this it is simply a tank which has uh, water uh, measurement arrangement uh, for inflows and outflows and we go the same crop we install it in the same environment in which that crop has to be installed i cannot put a lysimeter at lahore and say i am measuring the evapotranspiration requirement for crop in uh, quetta so we cannot do it so lysimeter should be in the same environment in the same climatic condition in which that crop has to grow so second type of the method is a uh, pan evapometer uh, you have uh, studied different kind of evaporation pans in subject of hydrology you remember those there are some sunken pan there are some uh, uh, span with the screen and the one pan which was mostly used we call that as a, a standard pan or class uh, a pan us weather bureau class a pan so that is uh, utilized more frequently so that's why we we will mention that one over here also so if you have the data of the pan evaporation and usually pan is a simple construction it is uh, a tank 
of 1.2 uh, meter, I think, diameter, 1.2 uh, meter diameter, 120.7 centimeter diameter, with a depth of 25 centimeter. This will be made of 10 inch ki depth and it will be 4 foot iska diameter. Hai. So, 4 foot diameter, 10 inch ki depth, not very costly, placed on a wooden platform, uh, having a stilling well, a short as a slender is meant lagadete which uh, in which we can place uh, hook gauge ki madad se we measure the with the help of the hook gauge we measure the uh, water depth in this pan we measure the water depth in the pan today we measure the water depth in the pan tomorrow at the same time the difference will tell me evaporation on in one day so if there is a rain occurred in the previous day and the rain gauge is available so subtract that rain from that measurement so then uh, you will be getting the pan uh, evaporation. So if pan evaporation is there, we know this evaporation is function of local climatic condition. It is depending upon sunshine, it is dependent upon temperature, it is dependent upon wind speed, humidity. So it is a function of local climate. So pan evaporation data, which is easily available on quite good uh, 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 distribution, Nearly every district has a pan evapometer. Every district. So, so we get this data quite easily on daily basis. If we have this data, it means climatic conditions are uh, more or less known to us. So, if we multiply this pan evaporation data, which we call as E pan, pan evaporation value for one day, that we call as E pan or for one season. If you multiply with the coefficient of the pan, so we get the factor which is known as potential evaporation. So at the moment, this is not of my interest, but if I multiply that E pan with another factor we call as uh, crop evapotranspiration, that we call as a crop factor, Kc, similar to what which we previously taught, Kc value. If we multiply this E pan with the uh, crop factor, and uh, keep in mind this crop factor is not constant thing. It varies from crop to crop. For wheat, crop factor will be something else. For rice, it will be something else. So if crop factor is known to me, E pan, uh, if it is measured in the field in from the pan, if I multiply them together, I get the ETC for that crop. This crop factor are from the experiments, from the uh, studies, people have given us the crop factor for different crop. For example, for wheat in, uh, in neighboring Ludhiana in India, wheat in Pune district in India, uh, some uh, groundnuts in Israel. So people have carried out experiment. This is Hawaii near USA, I think, in Philippine, this rice. So this K value for the whole season and the K value during the growth period of the crop are reported by the literature. Uh, to to multiply it with the pan evapor evaporation value. So this KC we will be getting from the literature. E pan we will be getting from the local uh, climatic station and we can find the ETC. So that is one method of estimation of uh, evapotranspiration using uh, pan evapometer. What we are doing, we are trying to estimate evap evapotranspiration using different method. So one method was told to use as pan evapometer. You get the data of uh, pan, E pan and multiply it with a KC, which you also get it from the literature uh, for the uh, crop of your interest. Multiply it and you can get the evapotranspiration requirement for the crop. So this study, uh, we don't see any, but uh, this Ludhiana is close to Punjab or it is, at, I think, city of Punjab uh, previously. So this can be used for the cave factors for wheat in Punjab. So more you see the literature, you can find more values. If you see the PCRWR website, you can see the values for Pakistani areas also. So th that is how it is. Let me see if I have some data of Pakistan. Yesterday also a student asked me, sir, why not we have the similar data for Pakistan? One of my MSc student carried out a work on it. His name was, I think, Bilal. MSc student thesis Bilal. Let me see in his. Uh, 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 
really high, really high, really high, really high. Uh, Sibel research, web performance, lysimeter, PCR, WR, water requirement. Water requirement measure curve in the center. Yeah. So they, they published this report. PCRWR is Pakistan Council of Research and Water Resources. They have offices in Lahore, Koita, and Peshawar, and other places. So they carried out this lysimeter study. And in the end, I think they have reported this uh, transpiration requirement for the crop. So you see here water balance for the crop study. Finally, they are giving us for wheat. ET is 42 centimeter, I think. What is it? 421. Hopefully it is in millimeter. They have not mentioned the units. Hopefully it is in millimeter. Sugar cane about 1.5 meter. Sunflower. So this study can be uh, referred to for the local uh what we call it measurement of evapotranspiration requirements so what is this study you can refer it to water requirement of major crops in central punjab so they have carried out this study so in in 2018 or 17 maybe why it is taking so much time so this is their research field and I think they make small plant, small uh, what they call it, uh, uh, small fields, and they carried out the study in this field. They put water, they measure it. Any water which is drained out that is measured. Uh, climatic uh, station is also there, which can measure the rain, rain and other factors. So this is their research station. So we have the similar studies. Uh, so I can refer it in my literature. So, okay, so this is one of the method. Pan evapometer. If you have the e, e pan, if you if you have the k factor, which is the crop coefficient, far pan evapometer, then you can find the etc, actual evapotranspiration for different crops. This is the most easy method. You need e pan and you need k value and you can calculate. It. Another method which is also being frequently used and which is uh, recommended by uh, food and agriculture organization also, uh, they call it blennick riddle method. Uh, now food and agriculture organization, in addition to blennick riddle, they also recommend that we should go and use uh, penman monteith equation for estimation of uh, evapotranspiration if climatic data is available, like uh, sunshine hours, like uh, uh, wind speed, like humidity, if these things are available to us, then we should go to penman monteith equation. This method, blennick riddle method, requires even less data as compared to the uh, penman monteith equation. It needs even less, less uh, data. It calculates a factor F based upon two climatic factors. One is called as uh, percentage sunshine hours, P. P over here is percentage sunshine R and T over here is the temperature. Blennick Riddle, uh, uh, Riddle proposed this method to calculate evapotranspiration requirement or consumptive use requirement uh, on monthly basis. So he did not recommend it to use it on daily basis but now people are using it on daily basis also. So he recommended it to be utilized for estimation of consumptive use. And we know consumptive use, 99% is the evapotranspiration. So sometime I will call it evapotranspiration. Sometime I will call it consumptive use. So consumptive use estimation on monthly basis was uh, estimated by blennick riddle <laughs> using two factors percentage sunshine are of that place and the temperature of that place. 
so mean monthly temperature of that area so, and percentage sunshine hour are of the whole month in comparison to the sunshine hour of the whole year that is the percentage sunshine hour so p is monthly daylight sir? hours ji sir ye slide change nahi ho rahi sir स्लाइड चेंज नहीं हो रही क्योंकि मैं यहाँ से बाहर गया था दूसरी रिपोर्ट खोली थी लेट मी स्टॉप शेयरिंग एंड देन शेयर अगेन इस वक्त कौन सी स्लाइड पे मौजूद है हम लोग आई स्टॉप शेयरिंग नाउ आई एम शेयरिंग इफ इट इज ओके नाउ आई एम एट द ब्लैनिक रीडर फार्मूला अभी तो कुछ भी नहीं आ रहा जस्ट एक मिनट दे दो देर द लैग टाइम शो हो रही है पहले भी यही हो रही थी यस सर हो रही है शो ओके मे बी आपका लोकल प्रॉब्लम होगा एनी हाउ आई हैव शेयर्ड इट अगेन आई हैव शेयर्ड इट अगेन ओके ही ही यूज्ड दिस टू पैरामीटर्स परसेंटेज सनशाइन आवर्स एंड टेंपरेचर he proposed this method originally for fps system uh, inch inch pound and he used this temperature in fahrenheit and uh, he used uh, uh, consumptive use he calculated in inches in uh, of the consumptive use per month and formula was quite sim simple coefficient of the crop multiply by p into t over 100 so now because we are working in si system so now it has to be changed a little bit so this this is now p over 40 into 1.8 t plus 32 t in centigrade and uh, p is percentage does not matter with the system so only temperature have been changed in centigrade and the output of consumptive use through this formula will be in centimeters of the consumptive use hopefully everybody is with me that volume of water can be mentioned in volume unit as cubic meter cubic feet million acre feet it can be mentioned in depth unit also and you are clever enough how to convert them into each other so centimeters per month if we want to calculate so this formula we should use if we want to calculate in inches per month we should be and we have fahrenheit temperature we should be using this formula uh Uh, but uh, daylight hours uh, maybe this is new a new uh, term for you the uh, on the climatic station usually we have some instrument which measure the daylight hours was a, a, a spherical uh, uh, globe made of uh, glass is usually utilized i i don't remember its name kya naam hai uska a spherical glass ball ball is used so when sunshine occurs the uh, light is concentrated on a page lying underneath that sphere so when su sunshine is there the page is uh, is burnt if sunshine is not there the page remains intact so after every day that page or that card is removed and then then they measure actual sunshine hours in a day continuously climatic people keep record of the sunshine hours so from there they can actually measure how much is the sunshine hour today how much is the sunshine hour so maximum sunshine hour in a day if there is no cloudy day we can measure it easily by uh, location of a uh, place it depends upon the location of the place with respect to equator so uh, with respect to equator location is measured uh, in terms of latitudes so if we know the location of that city in which we are carrying out this study Uh, with respect to its latitude we can easily get the uh, percentage sunshine hours uh, in comparison to the annual sunshine hour at that place so some tables like this will be available in the literature i have taken uh, a part of a table from the book of irrigation engineering by asava with respect to different latitudes and with respect to different month of the year uh percentage sunshine hour p value is given over here lahore is said to be close to 33 34 degree latitude from the equator in the northern hemisphere the whole globe is divided into two hemisphere northern hemisphere southern hemisphere from 
uh, equator with respect to equator. If we go to North Pole, that is the Northern Hemisphere. We are in the Northern Hemisphere, Lahore, Pakistan, India, USA. Uh, so in the Northern Hemisphere, Lahore is at the latitude 33, 34 degree. So depending upon the month, the percentage sunshine are changes because of the tilt of the uh, Earth. Earth is uh, rotating about its own axis. Earth is revolving around the sun also. Earth is tilting its angle uh, or axis of rotation also. These are the three movement of the Earth. That causes changes of the season, that causes the changes of the day and night, that ch uh, uh, changes the uh, summer and the winter season, the tilt of the Earth. That is the 23 and a half degree uh, tilt on one side uh, in one season. So depending upon the month, this sunshine hour changes. And if it is April uh, for Lahore, it will be taken as 8.8%. 8.8%. So if I have the percentage sunshine hour from the tables like that one, and if I have from the climatic station, average or mean te monthly temperature in degree centigrade, F factor can be calculated. This K factor will be coming from again literature. If somebody have given me the cropping factor for different crops for Blenick Riddle formula. So then I will be using that cropping factor or I will be using cropping factor for the pan evapometer. So uh, first I should try to get the cropping factor for uh, what we call it uh, Blenick Riddle method. So that is also given in, in literature. Cropping factor to be used for cotton uh, for the whole season 0.6 to 0.7. The maximum value will be up to 1.1 when crop needs uh, crop is at the full maturity. It will be needing more water. Similarly for rice, this cropping factor should be used. So message is if you have the cropping factor with you, if you have the temperature and the percentage sunshine, you can calculate the consumptive use. And this method will be called as Blenick Riddle. It is a step going towards a physics based method because it is trying to use the parameters which we can measure like temperature and the sunshine are and through a, a coefficient we multiply that coefficients with the P and T and we can get the consumptive use. So it is not fully physics based, but it is a, a step towards uh, estimation of the evapotranspiration based upon uh, physical concept because we know temperature is controlling evapotranspiration. Sunshine is also controlling all other factors which control the evapotranspiration that those are not present over here. So those are summed in these factors the multiplying factor, these things uh, take into account or this K factor take into account all the other factors. So that is uh, used. It is also not much uh, uh, data intense, intensive, only uh, two values P and T can be used. So it will be uh, giving you the reference crop of aspiration, let us say, multiply with the K factor, you will be getting the consumptive use of the crop of your interest. Using this method, this numerical is uh, uh, supposed to be done by you. These first four columns will be informed to you. Uh, what is the mean temperature at that place? What is the crop coefficient for the crop which we are studying? What is the sunshine hours uh, for that month? Then consumptive use can be calculated using this formula as mentioned earlier. If we can repeat it for every month, if this crop is of uh, yearly duration, like sugar cane is the crop, so it should be for the whole year. So then monthly crop water requirement or consumptive use, uh, consumptive use can be calculated using this formula and we can sum them together. So we don't uh, provide this whole water through irrigation. If this is a consumptive use requirement of the crop, some of this requirement will be fulfilled through the direct rainfall on that area. So if there is some direct rainfall data is also available, put that one also over here in a column that the rainfall in January is so much, February is so much. Out of that rainfall, a part will be considered as effective rainfall. Not whole rainfall should be considered as effective rainfall. Usually uh, 60, 70, 80 percent can be considered as rainfall, effective rainfall. 
so that effective rainfall should be subtracted out of this total requirement or out of this monthly requirement so the difference will be the net irrigation requirement so when you have the net irrigation requirement then if you are providing this irrigation requirement from a barrage which is which is about 100 km away so then add conveyance losses into it using the conveyance loss formula so that will be then total requirement crop water requirement even uh, you can add further more if there are some special water requirement like uh, leaching of the salt if you want to carry out so in this way overall water requirement at the source can be calculated this is giving you the consumptive use at the field this 149 or 7.2 in the january is the requirement in the field so subtract effective rainfall out of it you will be getting the irrigation requirement that water which you need to provide through artificial mean at the field if you add conveyance losses you will be getting the water requirement at the head of the source at the start of the source head regulator so in this way at different locations you can calculate so main thing is you should understand that water requirement in the field is something else water requirement at the head of the regulator will be something else in between there are some losses that should be taken into account so that is what is mentioned in these two sentences so out of these water uh, requirement deduct effective rain to find irrigation requirement i have not done it so maybe you have to do it compensate for irrigation efficiency uh, for example if there are some losses uh if this was a requirement by the by the by the crop if there are let us say 10 15% losses calculate that 10 15% water add it add into it so that should, will be compensated in this way so crop need this much water losses should be further so losses can be at the field losses can be in the conveyance system so here we are talking about field and conveyance losses both together so if i say that total losses are 40% combined together so 40% of this should be calculated 0.4 into this thing and add it into it it will come out to be about 200 uh, uh, cm of water 2 m of the water for the whole season so this is way how we calculate uh, the actual consumptive use and uh, the net irrigation requirement and the total water requirement considering the losses also please do it and then uh, submit it also in the laboratory uh, some people use this uh, blanek riddle method on daily basis formula is same definition of p and t is uh, changed if it is used on daily basis then it will be giving you consumptive use in centimeter per day Cent and uh, it will be of course it will be less than the consumptive use per month so in this temperature should be mean temperature of a day p should be the daily sunshine hour as a uh, percentage of the annual sunshine hour so <coughs> sunshine hour of a day divided by the sunshine hour of the whole year so for that the ref, uh, the relevant table will be this one the p as a percent of the annual day light hours so daily uh, light hours as percentage of annual day light so this value if you see for april <laughs> for one day of april it will be 0.29 <coughs> as compared to 8.8 .8 previously we have seen so this p value table should be changed when you are working on daily basis so these are uh, some of the factors uh, some of the methods which we want to tell you Uh, if somebody is interested in other methods, uh, I will say, for example, if somebody is interested in Penman-Montieth equation, you can see that equation. Uh, that is more detailed equation. So this one is a Penman-Montieth equation. It estimates the lambda, and the lambda is the latent heat of vaporization. So it estimates the heat of vaporization available by using the net radiation. by using the uh, heat going to the soil by using a parameter delta they call it uh, saturation vapor pressure deficit slope of the saturation vapor pressure uh, and temperature uh, relationship 
they are using uh, humidity e saturation e actual they are using uh, uh, i think wind speed also they are using the crop resistance also ra so such things they are using these all are the uh, uh, climatic parameters of that location so from there they estimate the energy or heat of vaporization available they multiply it with the latent heat of vaporization and estimate the evapotranspiration requirement for the standard crop then they multiply it with the k factor crop coefficient and they estimate the so such detailed methods are available software are also available which have put this equation into the uh, software for example one software which is given by and freely available by the uh, food and agriculture organization they call it crop what c r o p w a t so that software ask you tell me the temperature humidity rainfall and then he gives you the evapotranspiration requirement using this equation so such things have been done and uh, are available and uh, conceptually if we want to see that is over here we 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 study this thing in detail in uh, msc so that is only for you as a reference that uh, such elaborate methods are available even more uh, detailed method latest method nowadays are available which we call as the estimation of evapotranspiration from the satellite observation there are there are a number of satellites rotating around the globe so they are continuously measuring energy incident at the place and energy especially they are measuring the energy reflected from the from the surface of the earth so that energy reflected they are measuring they know how much energy is given by the sun that is in more or less constant it changes based upon the uh, cloudy condition based upon the dust condition but uh, at the upper atmosphere it is constant so they know how much is energy coming they know by year how much is energy reflected difference they assume that this is the energy available for evaporation and from there they are calculating the evaporation and uh, there are uh, nowadays uh, methods available in even in pakistan i will again refer to pcrwr uh, if you go to the website they tell that we are telling to the farmer how much will be your water requirement in the next uh, today in the next one week depending upon the climatic condition of that area so they forecast i think uh, the precipitation they forecast the temperature of the next week and then uh, using those uh, climatic parameter they give the uh, idea to the farmer through message on the, their <coughs> their mobile phone that this much will be the your water requirement for this week so such methods are still being uh, evolved you can also work on such methods uh, and this will really benefit the people for this class we are teaching you to this so that you can estimate crop water requirement for the canal which you are which you are uh, supposed to design in a sports area in the laboratory you are giving a, given an assignment actually when you will be in consultancy and uh, if uh, you were consultant of jalalpur canal first question uh, you have to answer to yourself how big should be this canal how much should be the size of this canal so that is dependent upon the discharge discharge is dependent upon water requirement so over there this will help you this topic will help you okay i stop it over here let me take the attendance if you have any question you are welcome if you have any question you are welcome the 16 roll number you want to say something yes sir वैसे से पूछना था कि पेपर्स का कितने परसेंट चांस है कि ऑन कैंपस होंगे 19 को ऑन कैंपस होंगे क्या चीज पेपर्स और मिड टर्म एग्जाम्स 100% कब होंगे आई कैन नॉट से बट एग्जाम विल बी ऑन कैंपस इंशाल्लाह ओके सर तो वैसे 19 को चांस है कि 19 को हो जाएंगे हां अगर मैं कंट्री आज ही डीन मीटिंग है आज सब्र कर लो आज 2:30 बजे मीटिंग है 3 बजे ओके सर थैंक यू यस थैंक यू आई हैव टेकन द अटेंडेंस सो 
आई शुड पुट इट ऑन द व्हाट्सएप और कोई अटेंडेंस को मार्क भी कर रहे हैं सी आर सी आर यस सर जी सर मार्क कर रहे हैं मार्क कर रहे हो कोई एक्सेल की शीट बनाई हुई है या ये फाइलें ऐसे रखी हुई हैं एक्सेल शीट नहीं सर एक्सेल शीट बनाई हुई है ओके शेयर तो करो मेरे साथ सर ठीक है सर आज करते हैं अगर नहीं बनाए तो किसी फारिक टाइम पे बना लो ये ना हो कि आखिर में मेरे पास अटेंडेंस ही ना हो जी कोई सर कह रहा है जी बोलो सर आप जो अटेंडेंस शीट शेयर करते हैं सर उसमें तो हमारे अटेंडेंस होती नहीं है सर हम तो हर क्लास अटेंड करते हैं क्या वजह है क्यों नहीं होती सर आई डोंट नो शेयर भी बता सकते हैं काफी यू डोंट नो ये सब की अटेंडेंस लगा लेता है जो मीटिंग में आए हुए होते हैं इस वक्त मौजूद से जो ओके सर अब मुझे तो धोखा दे दोगे इसको कैसे धोखा देते हैं किसी की ड्यूटी लगा दो ना तो मैं लॉग इन कर दिया करें सर मैं हर क्लास में होता हूं सर शेयर भी बता सकते हैं फिर तुम्हें क्या मसला है सर मैंने वो लिस्ट के देखी है सर कुछ बच्चों की बहुत ज्यादा मतलब बार-बार अटेंडेंस आ रही होती है उसकी रीजन है उनका उनका कनेक्शन उनके कनेक्शन का मसला होता है वो बार कनेक्शन कटता है फिर लॉग इन करते हैं बेचारे देयर कनेक्शन एज अ प्रॉब्लम वो मसला नहीं है ओके अगर एक दफा भी आ गई है तो ठीक है इट मींस उसका कनेक्शन स्टेबल था सही ओके थैंक यू तो ये मैंने सेक्शन ए में पुट कर दिया सेक्शन डी में नहीं पुट की तो इसको फॉरवर्ड कर देता हूं सेक्शन डी Thank you very much. You can leave now if no question. Thank you, sir. Allah Hafiz. Allah. D may be my place. So stop recording.